Marcellus, I'll start with you. Mm. Think Brady's IG post is directed at Bill Belichick? No. I think it was directed at the NFL, and we're going to take it as it was directed to Bill Belichick because as last seen on the football field, he was with the New England Patriots. But this was an alert to 31 other teams out there for you not to pause for the cause of Tom Brady's services if you're contemplating, am I thinking about retirement or not? One, the indication came from the fact that he thanked the fan base. You don't thank the fan base unless you're thinking about departure, but departure to continue, not thanking the fan base, and then finishing that by saying, I still have more to prove. More to prove means I'm going to play, but thanking the fan base means probably not here. So this is not directed at Bill Belichick because Bill Belichick wouldn't have put Tom Brady in this position if he were thinking about bringing him back. Tom Brady, the GOAT, the great, you don't dangle him out there in terms of free agency and making him a lame duck this year as the quarterback of your team. So there's no sense and there's no rhyme or reason to bring him back. If you bring him back even at a low ball number, do you know how bad, how indicting that is? Because everyone in that locker room is going to say, Tom Brady didn't take a haircut because it was his choice. They gave him what he's worth, and he's not worth that much. So why would we start our season with a guy you don't even think highly of organization? So that's a damning situation in the locker room. All this points to Tom Brady continue his services elsewhere, but not as a Patriot. I'll agree with some of it, but I'll disagree with most of it. I'm going to say no, and that's my agreeing. But he's appealing to the fans, all right? This is... This is Tom Brady's strategic move to open season, open it up open season on Bill Belichick. All right, now, by the things he says and and thanking the fans and talking about he wishes everything finished with a win, if he could have finished that post the way he really wanted to, he would have put, so don't y'all allow Bill Belichick to move on from me. (laughs) That's That's how he would have ended his IG post, right? So to me, this is him using a public forum He's Tom Brady, all right? So you're going to now allow public opinion to sway what your ultimate destiny or what your ultimate landing place is going to be. He wants to stay in in, uh, in New England, and he is leveraging his most prized maybe asset in all of this, which is his fan base. Mm. I I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it's directed at Bill. I I agree with you. I don't think it's directed at Bill. I think it's directed at everybody that doubted what he has done, especially last year with him having some of his lowest, you know, uh, ratings and and numbers, so to speak. And it's letting everyone know. And like you said, I want – I think he wants to be in New England, but he's letting everybody know I'm not done and I have more to give. So if I'm not here, 31 other teams, Mm. I got more to give. And I want to go out here and prove that what was last year is not going to be what is the future of Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. I I don't see an indictment. Marcellus made the point that he thinks if Brady settles for 25, 24 million, that's some kind of indictment on Tom Brady. I think it's just an acknowledgement of I'm 42, what can the market really bear for a 42-year-old quarterback? Well, he's a free agent who fought viciously to make sure that he didn't get franchised. Now, he, the long of this, the boring of this is they tried to keep Jimmy G and offered an extension, a low-ball extension. Mm-hmm. Jimmy G said, nah, I'd rather wait this out. Remember, Jimmy G, Tom Brady, and Kraft all represented by Don Yee from former yep. fashion. So Jimmy G didn't want to wait that out. All of a sudden, he becomes on uh, the trade bait. He goes. And then Tom Brady's sitting there saying, all that money should come to me. I want an extension. They said, no, Tom Brady, no extension. What we'll do, though, is bump you up in salary. Still at a low ball number. But Tom Brady took that. He said, okay, my concession for you is I'm not going to be tagged. So now he's a lame duck. Now, in this situation, to get to $23 million, he had to go through all those hoops. Tom Brady. So now guess what he's saying? You think you're going to bring me back when now I am a free agent after fighting for the opportunity to become a free agent at a low ball number after you show me that lack of respect in terms of value? Oh, this is for 31 other teams out there. And the one thing that I know why you're correct in terms of this is to the fan base to try and win the court of public opinion while he goes and offers himself to 31 other teams is because he's pandering. 
unconditional support, he says, from a fan yes. base. You don't Ain't say a that. damn fan out there ever <laughs> had an unconditional love for us. It's all conditional. It's conditional on what you do on that field Thank and how you. You, how you perform. So like, Grady's playing a masterful game of chess, but it's not in New England. He already played that game and lost. He realizes even a triple team on Bill Belichick is listen, not enough. nobody wants to move, especially after he's been somewhere 20 years. He wants to be in New England. But with that message, he's saying, I thank my fans. I want to be here. I want to show you I have more to prove. But if it's not here, it's going to be somewhere else. And I do have more out there. There's 31 other teams. I got more out here. He put that I house up. You. Uh, he put that house up a month after he realized that. That's a $33 million house it's gonna now. Take time. It yep. was 40-something million. Yeah, yeah. That's going to take him long. I'm just saying this. all this adds up. Based bro. off of your narrative, mm. it sounds a little bit like you think Belichick owes Brady something. Uh-oh. Mm, not at all. Now we get back to the meritocracy of sports. <laughs> okay. That heartless, that heartless game that we all played and loved. And the reason I loved it is because it was heartless. It didn't care about your background, your likeness, your image, where you're from, how much you got. Put your hand in the huddle. Let's go get this together. And that's what is going to drive Bill Belichick to say, Tom Brady, you have to go. With you at quarterback, we are compromised. For whatever reason, Bill Belichick came to that summation. And I respect it because you don't owe any player anything. This is not the NBA where you get a hangnail and still get $100 million. This NFL where all you do is make the roster that year and get that money. Right. And that are that is the rules of the NFL in terms of what we do. He doesn't owe Tom Brady anything because Tom Brady got to go get it with his muscle. Bill Belichick owes Tom Brady a whole lot. Now, does that mean that whole lot that he owes him is going to have him decide to keep him in New England? No. But does he owe him that he can now go down in history as one of the greatest coaches to ever coach this game? Yes, you owe that to Tom Brady. Can you attach some other things that Bill Belichick owes, things that he probably experiences in his personal life, different things like that? Yes, he owes that. But I think the question is, is geared towards saying, but is that owing something that is going to make him make that a decision that he does not want? Is it going to leverage him mm. into a decision that he does not want to necessarily make? And I think that that's where you're 100% right. He's not going to allow what he owes Tom Brady to dictate the decision that he makes. I agree. I agree with you. He owes him for a lot of the credibilities that he has, six Super Bowls. I mean, you, you got to owe somebody something. But for the nostalgia of saying, I'm going to bring you back, even though in his heart and soul he doesn't believe he has what it takes, like you said, no matter what that reasoning is, he doesn't believe Tom Brady has it anymore, and he wants to move on from him and go a different direction. He doesn't owe him that because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, they want to call. They want to talk family and everything else. It's not family. The only thing is family between is the players because we actually truly care about each other. When it comes to that upstairs and that business part, right now is the business of the game. Whatever don't make them dollars and cents in championships, they go get rid of. And that's where he's at right now. I, I, I'm, I'm going to walk a thin line here and say that based off of what Brady, I think, believes is, you couldn't have established this culture that we have without, without me. Yeah. I was the enforcer of the culture. I was the, the guy you held up as an example. You can coach hard, blah, blah, blah. And, and so I think Brady probably does feel like, hey, man, I'm still that guy. I'm still the cultural enforcer, and I can play if you give me the right tools. You owe me another shot in 2020. Which, by the way, mm. is not a bad discussion point. I mean, you put any quarterback in that offense, you're going to have the same questions, right? Well, I mean, well, honestly, with, with the with the lack of weapons that they showed this year, mm. you're going to have some of the same. No, concerns. if you had a mobile quarterback, things would have been different and greater, probably. Let's be respectful of that. I will say this: we are saying the same thing. I'm saying it at a different starting point. I'm talking from now forward. You guys are talking about in totality, so I respect yeah, what you're saying. Sure. But from this point. Point forward, I don't owe you anything because no. you have to go fend for yourself. And I'm not going to overvalue you because of past, past successes that we've had, right? I'm not giving you a Kobe contract, bro. Kobe got two years 50 when everybody knew, oh, Kobe ain't two years 50. But they gave it to him. <laughs> and we're not going to do that for Tom Brady. So this whole that we built something together or you were the beginning of something great is amazing. And we're going to celebrate that in record. But 
J.J. Fad had the first hit on Rufus Record. Oh, no. Mega hit. Supersonic. Super. You Sonic. think Easy e and them old J.J. Fad and all of N.W.A. and all that? Like, yes. No, you don't. Right. That's how the game goes. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.